Hello my lovelies, welcome to my little cottage by the sea, the place where I love to stitch and craft my way to a vintage inspired and sustainable lifestyle. In today's video I'm doing a little bit of time travelling and I am putting together a 1940s capsule collection that you can sew today. I've selected a handful of patterns from across the 1940s decade and a little disclaimer here, I haven't actually sewn any of these but they are ones that I most definitely want to sew. There is a dress and blouse skirt, a jacket, another skirt jacket set, trousers, dickies and collars, a lovely fedora tilt hat and some bags and I've also mentioned in this video my Marlena Beret and my June Bug coat but I didn't have images. So this first pattern is the 1940s wartime frock from My Vintage Wish LW4041. I will of course link everything below and I really like this one because it's three styles one pattern although it does come at a bust of 36 so you may need to find another size in this pattern or pattern cut your own if you are able to pattern cut. I'm certainly going to be making a pattern from this. I've doodled the smock gathered bodice version and given it short sleeves and long sleeves and I love to work this way because it really helps me to see how the dress is actually going to look. Now I've gone to town on this capsule collection with the fabrics and I've selected the prints first, primarily from Maltings Fabric, which is a company based near me here in East Sussex. And they print vintage fabrics digitally, sustainably, onto both crepe de chine and onto cotton. So this pattern is called Priory and it comes in these three colorways. And I thought the fedora hat and this little bag out of this wool which is from Croft Mill Fabrics. I can't quite remember what this wool was called but I loved both of these colours and thought you could make the jacket or the hat to go with these dresses and they went with the prints really well. So here is the jacket pattern and it's from the Vintage Pattern Shop also on Etsy and it's a copy of the Simplicity 4187. I liked the fact that you could do it with the collar or without and one looks a little bit more casual and one looks a little bit more smart. A little sewing trick that they used to do back in the day was to use the printed fabrics as the linings for the jackets and bags that would then match with the dress that was worn and I would certainly use this method too. It's also very make do and mend which really resonates with me because sustainability is so incredibly important and if you don't particularly love this gold colourway I've just tried to give a selection of fabrics that all are interchangeable and would work with all the patterns. You could swap it out and use this very lovely red or burgundy colourway instead. I'm really drawn to berry fabrics and how lovely would it be inside that lovely bag and inside that fedora. This lovely jacket pattern is from the Vintage Pattern Shop also on Etsy and is a reproduction of the Simplicity 4187. It's in a bus size 34 so again you may need to track down a different size or pattern cut your own. Very wobbly camera here I'm ever so sorry but I was so excited about my capsule collection. I've added in this dicky always makes me laugh and collar pattern which is a 1940s simplicity pattern that's a reproduction a, a new reproduction available now and I've drawn out the the versions that I really liked and you can put these over the top of the dress the collarless and plain bodice version of the dress and completely change up the look. I didn't look for any organdy or lovely lawn and lace that you could have made these dickies in but I'm sure you can track down some should you wish to make this really fabulous outfit. These dickies and collars are a perfect opportunity to use up your vintage bits and pieces in your stash. I particularly love the little heart button that I've suggested here and Swagman's daughter has some fabulous vintage buttons so well worth seeing what she has available. I've swapped out the 
print for this black version, my favourite. And this chartreuse, it doesn't look chartreuse, but it actually is Italian wool, a perfect match for that collarless jacket version. And I absolutely really want to make this whole outfit now. I've really caused myself a bit of a problem because as this was an imaginary exercise, money, budget was not a consideration. So all the fabrics that I have found and have fallen in love with are way beyond my budget. But we can dream. I've then found this other really lovely pattern from Malting's Fabric. It's called Spinnies and is available in this lovely Bordeaux and black. Oh, I love both of them. I'm going to have to save some pennies and treat myself to one of these for a version of this dress. I've included the tweed because I really love it and I think it's called Rose Tweed but I will link everything below as I've already said and this lovely little bowling bag and again exactly the same dresses and here is a version that you can make in this gorgeous print which is from till the sun goes down and is a silk viscose mix my favorite dark floral and even though I didn't really need another pattern with a skirt in it it is slightly different I really loved the bolero jacket because it just gave a very different look to this whole capsule collection Here's another of the bags available in the pattern and I really think I'm going to be doing quite a lot of bag making in 2024 because it just is looking like so much fun. And here is a really lovely wool crepe available from Croft Mill that you could make that bolero jacket in and then line it in the fabric and make the dress in that fabric and you would have the most fabulous outfit to maybe go to the theatre in or to have a cocktail with a lover. The whole point of a capsule collection is to give you a lot of options with a few garments and I have gone a little bit over the top with prints that I'm suggesting but I just wanted to suggest a few things that would be suitable for a few different styles. Here is another look that you can create from these patterns. So this is the blouse and skirt from that wartime frocks and the same fedora, the same jacket with a black tweed and that really lovely fabric from the sun goes down or till the sun goes down rather. So I feel like I've suggested a gazillion options so far. I didn't actually count. Um, it would have been a really interesting exercise if I had. And I am actually going to be putting a journal piece up about this capsule collection so you can see flat pictures rather than my wobbly camera work. I've changed out the skirt for these trousers which are from Reconstructing History RH1375 and these come in lots of sizes and I loved the fact that they were so wide legged and actually very simple with a side zip. You could make them in tweed or you could make them in a more drapey viscose or even you could go crazy and make them in a satin and give yourself a really incredible pair of evening trousers to wear. I'm not going for historical accuracy in this 1940s capsule collection that you can sew today. The 40s had very different requirements throughout because of huge global events going on and the silhouette changed quite drastically from the very early 1940s to the late 1940s. My preference is the early 40s, the very late 30s actually going into the 40s but as you know, once you get into the latter part of the 1940s, you're getting this very different silhouette, lots of swags and also Dior's new look. I thought this print from Malting's Fabric, which is called the Furl. Furl Place is a big stately home actually quite near Lewis, which is where Malting's is based. I thought this was a really pretty pattern and would make a lovely blouse and then again I've just swapped out those fabrics and put in a Liberty of London lawn the capel print which is a favourite and here it is in a blush pink 
this Simplicity Repro pattern number 8462 also comes with a blouse but I don't actually use or mention the blouse pattern but it is very lovely. I thought this would look really beautiful in that grey wool which looks so lovely with the blush pink. You've got a more circular skirt here, probably a half circle and then this lovely bolero but the circle skirt or half circle skirt would look fab with the little blouse that comes from the wartime frocks pattern. I think this is really lovely. I'm not suggesting that you buy all these wools, maybe just select one or two that is your colour preference. And here is the dress, a long version with some different options that you could sew it in. How lovely would a full length version of the wartime frock be in this furl print. This time I've put the collar on with the smocked and gathered shoulder details and how lovely would pearl or bejeweled vintage buttons be. You can make an evening version of the bolero and here's a suggestion for either satin or crepe all from Croft Mill these fabrics that I suggest here in a full length version of the skirt and you could make a little evening clutch and then put one of the more decorative dickies over and then here going back to day wear is a lovely tweed and I'm suggesting that you make some kind of overcoat to go with this. I think this print here from Maltings Fabric was actually one of my favourites and it's called Spinnies in black and it's got chartreuse, black, white and grey tones to it. Really pretty. I thought this blush pink capel would make a lovely version of the pleat shoulder detail dress and you could use accents of this other print on maybe covered buttons or on the collar and how lovely they go with that very pale grey wool from Croft Mill. Here is another suggestion for the wartime frock in another print from Maltings called Halland, which is black with a sort of splodgy, strange polka dot all over it. And it also comes in a brown or burgundy, I think. Both equally lovely. I don't tend to wear brown, but black, you know, is the colour of my soul. And here's a decorative scalloped edge version of the dickey, which completely changes up the look yet again. So you really are getting a huge amount of bang for your buck. We're just selecting just a few patterns here. And here you can see this sort of splodgy polka dot effect of this fabric. I bet it looks really fabulous in real life. And here's the whole entire collection. I'm not suggesting that you get all of those fabrics, but those patterns are certainly on my wish list. And the only thing that I would add in that I haven't shown you here is some kind of swing coat. I would be using my June bug, which was an exclusive Patreon pattern, and then a beret because berets are timeless and fabulous and I'd be making versions up in the wall lined in the prints with my Marlena beret which you can find in my shop on my website. I am now going to go and count out my pennies and see how many of these fabrics and patterns I can actually buy. Oh my gosh my lovelies I have had so much fun putting this video together. It really has been an absolute joy and now I just really want to buy all those patterns and all that fabric which is going to really break the bank for me right at this moment but it's just been absolutely what I needed totally inspiring and I really hope that you found this inspiring too and there are some ideas that you can take away obviously you can find other fabrics that suit your particular likes in terms of color and texture and so on and put together capsule wardrobes of your own but I really really hope that you've enjoyed this and I really appreciate you taking the time to spend the time with me in my little cottage by the sea and coming on these time traveling adventures with me. I've enjoyed this one so much going back to the 1940s and putting together a capsule collection that we can sew today that I think I'm going to do it again at some point in the not too distant future. There are quite a few decades that have got some lovely wardrobe inspiration in them so hopefully you'll come and join me again for some more time traveling to other decades and more capsule collectioning because it's so much fun. I really appreciate all the kind words that you always 
leave in the comments and if you've got ideas for other patterns that would be suitable or that you like for the 1940s then do share them because it's really lovely to share ideas and resources i really love this community of kindred spirits who love to stitch and sew and make the world a better place one stitch at a time if at all possible if you haven't already subscribed then please do so and come time traveling with all of us to another decade in the not too distant future and until then, take care my lovelies. Bye.